Hi, and welcome to this section of the Matrix Algebra Tutor. And in this section, we're going to conquer the topic of row equivalent matrices. Okay, row equivalent matrices. And what does that mean? Okay, when you see something like row equivalent matrices or matrix, row equivalent matrix equations, it might you know, uh, get you a little bit worried that it's going to be a complicated topic. Really, this section is going to have no more difficult operations than addition and uh, subtraction and multiplication. Okay, it's just that we're going to be using matrices and so it's going to look a little bit odd to you at first but all we're going to be doing is adding and multiplying so it's really easy math it's just like anything else you have to know the rules okay so we're going to talk about the rules so first what I want to do before I actually get into the topic of what a row equivalent matrix is I want to give you a little motivation okay uh, because it's very important this and the next several sections are all going to be dealing about the main use of matrix uh, of, of matrices, uh, at least this part in your math education, and that's going to be using matrices to solve systems of equations, okay? Remember back from Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, long time ago, nothing you know, fancy here. This is just equations, uh, maybe two or three equations and, and multiple uh, different variables, and you were taught how to solve those systems of equations by substitution, or by addition, or there's, there's other methods too, by graphing. You could graph those equations and see the intersection point, and that was called the solution, okay? And if you have three variables, x, y, z, you'll need three equations in order to solve it, and you were given the tools to do that uh, in your previous you know, math studies, okay? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna start actually tackling the topic of using a matrices to actually solve those systems, and you'll find out that it's actually pretty easy once you get the hang of it, okay? So I want to I want to give you uh, a little motivation first why we're going to study the topic of row equivalent matrix, uh, matrices and in the next couple of sections we're going to actually start solving systems of equations and so the row equivalent matrix topic is actually going to be used in an integral part of, of everything we do from here on out okay so you need to understand this don't just blaze through it because if you don't get this then the next sections after it just aren't going to make any sense at all so pay attention here I think we'll be good so what we want to do first is I want to give you a practical example let's write some equations on the board it doesn't even matter what 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 it represents okay we're gonna write some uh, a system of equations on the board and get your brain thinking about what we're gonna use this stuff for and let's write it down in matrix form which I haven't taught you how to do yet I'm gonna write that system of equations down in matrix form let's talk about it a little bit and then we'll understand why the row equivalent matrix stuff is really important so let's go ahead and do that now okay so you might be given to to uh, to you on a test uh, you might have a system of equations and if you haven't studied that stuff in a while a system of equations is 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 actually not really that big of a deal okay this is an equation I mean you know this right you've got something on the left is equal to something on the right that's all an equation means okay so there's three variables x y and z and so obviously I have three unknowns okay so it's just a fact of life however many unknowns you have you must have that many equations uh, the same number of equations in order to solve for it, okay? And x, y, z here, you know, we're using x, y, and z, and a lot of the math classes use x, y, and z, and that, that's fine. But in real life, this could be an equation that, that, that uh, governs the uh, temperature, could be x, the pressure, could be y, and z could be the humidity or something like that. So each variable could represent some, some uh, representation of some property of a gas or something like that. And so you might want to calculate what those values are. But because you have three unknowns, you can't solve it with a single equation. You have to have more than one equation. So you may write another equation that says that the variables are related in this way. And the exact example that we have here really doesn't matter at all. I'm just kind of writing down something to get our juice is flowing here. 